Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy. Welcome back for another week here in Neptune City. Uh, this week, we have a very exciting, very fun project. Really can't wait to get into it. But unfortunately, we do have about uh, 10 minutes of miscellaneous dilly dallying to take care of here at the top of the episode. Um, you know, a big belief of mine when it comes to City Skylines builds is uh, you need an explanation for everything. If you want your city to be fully complete, uh, you need to, at some stage or another, address every single possible uh, question about your city, right? Uh, Where does the water come from? Where does waste get disposed of? You know, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, obviously, Neptune City was never going to be fully, fully complete until I had explained to one degree or another where does the power come from this is not going to be the only source of power for the city obviously it's a pretty big coal power plant that i think probably for a good while did the job uh but in in modern times it probably isn't you know it isn't doing everything that it needs to be doing so this is the old power plant uh it is still operable of course because uh you know, if it were to stop polluting the city, then uh, the city would stop being the city. Over here, just doing a quick little abandoned mill, uh, just kind of down at the bottom of the bridge. This is a part of the city that we have we worked on a long time ago. Haven't come back to in a good while. Uh, I was pretty excited to get back over here. This is kind of a very fun aesthetic to work in, uh, and it's kind of the only part of the city where this sort of stuff is. So it's it's fun to be back over here. Um, I figured this is maybe like a, I don't know, a cigar factory. Maybe it's, um, ooh, maybe it's, ooh, here we go. Uh, this is tobacco that, uh, was at some stage, uh, coming in from Silver Republic, uh, and being, you know, uh, maybe the, you know, maybe the cigars are being rolled there too. And this is just kind of like the, uh, American, uh, maybe packaging and, and distribution center for it. But obviously, what with the embargo beginning in the um, in the 50s uh, that, that, you know, ceased operations and uh, never really found a new tenant and just kind of fell into disrepair. Um, otherwise, just kind of just roughing it up, you know, just doing some standard stuff over here. The, you know, corrugated metal, the messed up concrete, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, yeah, I absolutely love, even though, you know, like I said, this is kind of dilly dallying at the beginning of an otherwise very eventful episode. Uh, I do love the way this comes out. I think this whole little area looks really nice. Um, and, uh, kind of to the front of the screen right now, you can see me putting a little fence on it. This is kind of an abandoned bit of rail infrastructure that, um, you know, I, I, there's a lot of this around the city. I'd say probably a great deal more of this than there is of, of working uh, rail. But I, I really love having this sort of stuff around. I think it really it, it adds a lot to the vibe of the city and like it kind of helps to uh, create these little spaces that um, you could imagine yourself if you grew up here in, in Neptune City. This is kind of like one of those places where you and your friends would probably be sneaking into and stuff to, to get into trouble. All right, so over here, this is the meat of the episode. This is kind of the main project we're getting to here. This began as a um, this began as just an experiment. Uh, Eva had sent me these um, these dry docks. Uh, Eva Metri on the workshop, uh, you know her well. Uh, she sent me these dry docks to just kind of test out to see what was going on with them. I just wanted to see if I could get them to stay dry, to get water into them, etc. Just kind of like the different permutations that you could have of these dry docks I wanted to try to make happen. And uh, I just kind of got to goofing around with them long enough that eventually I just was like, you know what? Let's just keep it. Let's just keep this episode going. Why not? Uh, so we are now into the main project. This is the Navy Yard. And... Um, I've kind of like built out this little harbor area here that I imagine is, you know, fairly, um, you know, artificial. This was just dug out by hand, probably. I don't think the water did anything remotely close to what it does here. Um, 
next to it is kind of like an actual creek though that was that that's a naturally formed little uh water inlet um kind of similar to what exists on the other side of of the river uh, that we kind of built all that old industry around so here you see me starting to play with the dry docks this is um not necessary uh i just want you to know right off the bat because this is this episode now is uh hopefully if all goes according to plan this episode is uh serving a little bit as a uh, advertisement for the dry docks themselves if everything has gone according to plan you are seeing right now a screenshot of the workshop where you could find the dry docks and in the description you will find a link to the workshop where you can get these uh, they themselves come standard with a sort of clipping mechanism built into them so that they just clip straight into the ground. You don't need to do any of this garbage that I'm doing right now. What I'm doing right now is because I am um, a, a bit of a perfectionist freak and uh, it just <laughs> it was what I needed to do to get the sharp, sharp line that I wanted, that I craved. Um, <laughs> so don't worry about that. You can, as a casual player, you can just kind of plop them down and they'll work just fine. So what are we doing here? This project is um, based on a couple of places. Namely, this is based on Philadelphia. This is... Um, they have there. There's a navy yard there that I think used to be more active than it is currently, um, but it is the home of the like the U.S. Navy. I think they call it the Mothball Fleet. This is where they keep the ships that aren't currently in active use. They're not necessarily the most up to date ships that we have in the United States Navy, but they um, they serve an important purpose as sort of a potential reinforcement if uh, push ever came to shove. And uh, that's kind of what I was going for here is that's the same general idea is this isn't necessarily where any sort of active Navy ships are, you know, docked or hanging out or anything, but it is where, you know, a lot of kind of like the older, rustier ships are just kind of kept and maintained and, and you know, kept ready just in case. Uh, and these dry docks are probably owned by the Navy, but primarily used by the general public. I think this is probably just like a pretty um pretty active dry dock facility where like you know cargo ships and stuff who are going into the container port and whatever smaller ones i mean these aren't cargo ship sized but it's it's a place where you can get your ship repaired i guess is the idea but it is owned by the navy um and yeah otherwise i'm trying different permutations of the edges of this uh this key i guess it is um you know this dock or whatever uh i tried using keys initially but i didn't like how fat it looked and i almost never like the way that keys look i don't think um i'm almost always going to opt for this sort of a look where you have a nicer kind of thinner sharper edge that kind of really emphasizes how cool it is that you have these dry docks clipped into the ground just there Oh, here's something. This is um, this video takes place during the time uh, immediately following the release of the airports DLC. These all kind of came in different order. I kind of I, I hinted at that in the airports episode. Uh, but one of the things that came along with the airports DLC is a bunch of mods breaking, and um, you know me needing to update my mods. Um, which, you know, most of the time is just fine. Not a problem. But uh, when you are like me and you collect old mods, um, you know, sometimes this, um, this results in a big change to your workflow. And in this case, it meant that I had to finally, at long last, uh, update my prop anarchy tool which means I have to use the new one, which is, yes, very much better than the one that I was using before. However, uh, it does not have the old paint UI tool, which they used to have, which meant that you could uh, paint buildings using the Move It mod. And uh, now you can see me very angrily, <laughs> uh, very frustratedly uh, changing the colors of buildings by hand, each and every one of them, driving me absolutely wild. Uh, I decided in Scylla Republic, I'm just going to keep the outdated prop anarchy tool and just deal with the repercussions of it because quite frankly, that city is too colorful to do otherwise. 
So over here, down at the edge of this, I'm kind of trying to like break things up a little bit, give it a little bit of a natural edge in some places and like a, you know, a dock edge at some places, just kind of showing that like, you know, it, it isn't necessarily crucial for all of this to be, you know, uh, dockable. You don't need to be able to put a ship on every single, you know, bit of, of, of this dock. Uh, there are some places where it's just some rocks and some trees and stuff. Anyway, we're about to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we are going to expand out this base and add a whole lot more to it. And we're back. So over here, uh, putting down a kind of like a big factory facility, this is kind of what I think is kind of the extended story of this naval facility, right, is uh, as it kind of like fell out of favor and fell out of use and became a more, uh, you know, more of the mothball fleet and whatever, um, you know, some of this space that maybe used to be occupied by more naval operations has been kind of like partitioned off and sold off to a uh, more general industry. So like some of these, um, some of these factories that are around here, you're going to see are probably not currently occupied by the Navy. Like these dock houses that I'm putting down here. I don't imagine these are actually part of the, the Naval facility any longer. These are probably just rented out as, you know, general manufacturing and warehousing space. Um, you'll kind of see as we go through this, that like, this is kind of a big, a big theme of the area is um, just big buildings that the Navy probably just doesn't have any use for anymore. I mean, listen, I'm no, I'm, I'm no uh, military expert by any means. I'm not in the military for God's sake, but uh, I, I do have to imagine that like there wouldn't be a whole heck of a lot of use for these buildings for for the modern Navy. These are just kind of, I mean, I think maybe they would have been like barracks at some point but like the the naval facilities i've been able to find reference for which are like the philadelphia one the um formerly brooklyn one and the uh, ann arbor one th they seem like the barracks are mostly just like um like single houses <laughs> like uh, just low density single detached houses um Somebody let me know if there's like one big facility where a lot of them live. I imagine a lot of the Navy, uh, this is going to sound very stupid probably, but I imagine a lot of the Navy lives on boats. Um, anyway, otherwise what I'm doing here is just a whole heap of uh, filling space because I kind of like built this thing out and then I, I had the plans to put the dry docks here and I had the plans to put, you know, some of these buildings around it. But filling out the interior space is very difficult, uh, it turns out. I also think that I might have sped up this footage a bit more than I usually do because this looks kind of insane. Um, so apologies for that if you're getting vertigo right now. But this does look a great deal faster than my footage usually looks. Uh, so down here, what I'm doing is kind of more in line with what I was talking about is these sort of like smaller buildings. Um, to look more like, you know, Navy housing. And maybe this is currently active Navy housing, maybe it's not. Uh, I was kind of thinking of this as maybe initially, at least, when I was kind of, you know, in the, in the throes of passion, in the midst of building this project. I was kind of thinking of these more as a, um, uh, like an educational facility, like maybe this is like a Navy academy or something like that. Um, but then I looked it up and there is only one Navy Academy. It's called the Navy Academy and it's in Annapolis, Maryland. And it just doesn't make sense, uh, story wise for it to be in Neptune city. This isn't, this wouldn't be a prestigious, uh, facility. There's also not a lot of boarding schools that are feeders for the Navy Academy. It turns out there's like one in Maine. So I did, had to kind of check that one off the list as well. What I think I'm going to say is that this uh, formerly was a large naval uh, base. Uh, these were formerly barracks for, you know, naval officers and, and, and uh, d d sailors and, and what have you. Uh, but in, in today's Neptune City has been sold off to a private uh, 
quote unquote uh, reform school, a, a school where you send your kids when they're bad, that kind of gives the uh, <laughs> gives the vision, uh, gives the aesthetic, I should say, of um, of a military school, but in reality is just uh, just owned by some rich guys on a power trip who are just gonna you know hurt these kids for a couple of years until their parents can you know figure out something else to do with them over here i really like the way this looks unfortunately i don't capture a whole lot of footage of what i do here uh but i kind of made this like corner uh mill that runs along where this abandoned track is and i put a bunch of like weeds and, and debris around it to make it look abandoned like everything else around here but kind of what what i do in the back ends up looking really cool i use these like little factory pieces to kind of extend out the back of it and um and i built like a little park in there and i i'm struggling to remember how much of this i get footage of you'll see momentarily whether i move on instantly after putting these down or not but uh oh and then i, I put this little kind of like more modern um warehouse facility in front of it just to kind of like show that because this thing is fully abandoned um you know, that space is not, um, you know, not of great desire any longer. Oh, here we go. So now I'm just kind of building out this little quad in the middle of this, uh, you know, fake military facility, uh, <laughs> which I've now fully decided is what the story is here. And building some more of this housing and, and what have you. And uh, I really like the way that these end up looking with like the paths kind of like running through them the way that they do kind of running through the doors to each side and then kind of one path running down the center of the, the whole the whole shebang. Uh, it kind of it, it, it ties them all together in a way that's really nice uh, and, and kind of gives it this very military esque sort of a look. Now over here, you're going to be very surprised to hear this, folks, but we've got a uh, an abandoned piece of rail infrastructure and uh <laughs> this one uh instead of a rail line is going to be a little rail yard that just kind of sits a little wee bit above the level of the street uh and i i really like the way it looks and i just kind of really rough it up in a way that i haven't really done in a lot of these where i kind of like put a lot of debris and i put a lot of weeds and i put um some rusty uh some rusty cars as well just to really kind of drive the point home that this thing is not in good condition i think this is i think after this episode i sort out my mods a little bit better and kind of figure out what the hell it is that i'm doing uh so a lot of these frustrating things that are happening in this episode which may only be frustrating to me because i'm the person who did this episode and i'm the person who played uh, but a lot of these frustrating things kind of go away. And then over here, I think this is kind of the last little bit of the episode. There's a few little bits left, uh, but I'm just kind of like filling in the little gap that's left in between my early episode dilly dallying and my late episode, um, naval base. I kind of made this little dock here that, um, unfortunately absolutely, uh, haunts me. <laughs> Uh, the moment I finish it, I uh, accidentally have now changed the water level uh, in this little area uh, right next to my extremely delicate little uh, dry dock area that requires that the water level stay exactly the same. So recording cinematics for this episode end up, ended up being an absolute nightmare trying to um, trying to keep the water from sitting over the top of that clipped area and looking completely insane. Anyway, this is the end of the episode, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for spending your Friday with me. My name is Jeremy. You can find me on Twitter at Jeremy Thunder. And uh, if you want to support the channel, you can become a channel member. The button should be down below next to the subscribe button, which you should also hit if you haven't already. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, there's also a Buy Me Coffee link if you wanted to support me. Uh, download the Dry Docs by Eva, and I will see you next week.